All right, so last time, um, instead of doing the mystery mean activity, we were trying to, you know, determine what is the true proportion of all individuals in the U.S. who have contracted COVID at least once um, since the pandemic started. And then we found that out of the 93 family members that we, you know, we took data on, 38 of them had COVID. So 38 out of 93 is going to be our P hat, our sample proportion, which we found to be about 0 0.41 when we rounded. Now, um, we can all agree that this is likely probably not equal to um, the true proportion. Um, but, you know, it's like, well, is this around it? Like, how can we like what can we do with this? How can we say about the true proportion um, from the sample? So let's um let's let's actually start by asking a like another a qu uh, another question. Let's ask like what's the probability that p hat is within two standard deviations of the true proportion P. Two standard deviation of the true proportion P. So let's think about this. Um, from last chapter, we were all about sampling distribution. So um, we checked our conditions already and we found that, you know, we can say that the sampling distribution of P hat Fair to say it's, that that's approximately normal. So let's first, let's first label the same distribution of P. Approximately normal because it's reasonable to say that um, we haven't taken um, more than 10% um, of the population. And, um, or, or sorry, we can, we, can, we, we can say it's approximately normal because of the large condition that because N, N times P hat and um, N times, whoa, what's going on? N times one minus P hat are both at least 10. We also call, call like the successes and failures condition. Both of these checked out. And um, we know from the previous chapter that since um, um, proportion or sample proportion is an unbiased estimator that this sampling distribution will, will have a mean that's equal to the true population proportion. So we would say that the, the mean of the sampling distribution of P hat is equal to P. In addition, so you, based on a 10% condition, we can use the um, standard deviation formula for proportion, the standard deviation is sampling proportion of p hat. Now, normally it's you know it's going to be um, p times one minus p over n. Take the whole square root. Of, take the whole square root of this. However, um, we don't know what p is, so we instead it will use we instead use p hat. This is actually technically called standard error. It's the standard error of p hat, um, but we'll get into that in a later in a later section. For now, we'll just you know we'll stick with what we know about standard deviation. Um, so we found that when we did this, it was about 0 0.051. Now, um, so going back to this question. What's the probability that P has within two standard deviations of P? Well, since this is approximately normal, from what we know about a normal um, distribution, is that it follows the 6895997 rule. So let's mark these. Let's say that's one standard deviation. Let's say it's D2. So this, this is um, two standard deviations 
away from p hat or away from the mean here. And this is minus, you can see minus two standard deviations below p. So plus two standard deviations, minus two standard deviations. And since this is approximately normal, we know 95% of the total error is going to be within this interval. So essentially, our answer is that we have that our answer is 95%. Um, let's remember that every um, sample size. Um, when we take samples of a certain size, it, it's going to have a unique distribution. So like we took samples of size 93. And so if we were able to take all the possible samples of size 93 and calculated all the possible paths, um, it, would, it would be technically what's the sampling distribution of, it would technically make up the sampling distribution of p hat. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of these. There's a whole bunch of combinations. Like if we took another sample, we can make maybe let's say we got another sample proportion that you know was like 0.39. And let's say we took another sample 93, we got um I don't know, let's say 0.42. Kept on doing this, and we would get all the possible sample proportions that we can get from samples of size 93, and 95% of them would be within two standard deviations of P. So we got a pretty good, we got a pretty good chance that, that our answer is gonna be within two standard deviations of the true proportion. So let's see like what is, what that distance is. The sense where we have a normal distribution, that distance is just gonna be two times the standard deviation of p hat away, or, um, which we found to be 0.051. So we're going to basically add 2 times 0.051 to our estimate and subtract it. So we would get like, um, let's just go down here. So we would have p hat plus minus 2 times standard deviation of p hat. So what that means, we're going to have point Four one plus minus point oh five one. Or sorry, plus two times. So I don't like random ten plus two times point oh five one. So four one plus two times point one point four one minus two. And we would get values from 0 0.308 to 0.512. And so um, this is what's called our 95% confidence interval. We're 95% confident that this interval contains the true population proportion. Um, now, let's get a little more specific about this. Um, this interval is made up of a point estimate and what's called a margin of error. So let's think of it like this. Let's think of it um, as, you know, let's think of it as being on number line and we start in the middle with our point estimate, which is 0.41. And then from there, we add two standard deviations. And we get the value over here. And then we take away two standard deviations, we get a value over here. Now, um, this lower bound we found to be 0.308. We found this one to be 
512. And this distance from here to here, that's called our margin of error, ME for short. Margin of error is, so, is the, distance the center to one endpoint. So the error is also, since it's, since it's symmetrical, the margin of error is the distance from 0.41 to 0.512 or 0.308 to 0.41. Same thing, that's the idea. So there, there's the basic idea behind confidence intervals. So let's, um, Let's, let's, let's go through formal nodes so we can go through then we can so we can get some practice problems. So um, we define a C percent confidence interval to be, you know, basically an interval of values that we say are plausible or reasonable to believe based on the data we get. Um, it's calculated from that point estimate. So from our sample that we gather and that statistic we gather it could be it could be a sample mean or a sample proportion. We did simple proportion um, for our example, but it could be sample mean or others or other types of statistics. And plus minus our margin of error. We're gonna get more into the margin of error um, in the later sections. But for now, we just need to understand that this is how our confidence interval is created. Um, Again, when you take um, multiple samples from a report from a population, you don't you're not gonna you don't you're not gonna expect it the same statistic each time. Like we're not gonna get the same sample proportion each time we take 93 people from the population. Um, so what we so confidence level tells you that if you kept on taking samples of size 93, um, this tells you what basically percent of all those possible and inter possible intervals intervals would capture the true proportion? So our confidence level from a ninety five percent confidence interval will be ninety five percent. It's a little different, similar but a little different, and we're gonna get into it um, as we go through this unit. And it's also stand some key things that plausible doesn't mean anything is possible. You know, technically you could say any values for the population parameter is possible. Like for proportion, we can say any value from zero to, to one is possible because proportion can go from zero, zero percent to 100%. And who cares? Like who cares if we, if we say, oh, we know, that the, we know that P is gonna be from zero to one. Like we don't, like we want some values that actually help us um, figure stuff out in the real world. So we're gonna use our data to, you know, come up with something that's rational, believable, reasonable based on what we gather. So when you um, are first, so when you're first doing these types of problems, I recommend, you know, having a, a sentence frame to um, state your um, answers or and interpret your confidence intervals specifically. Um, technically, you don't have to follow a certain set structure, but I've, I've learned that it's helpful for students when they start off this way. So what we're gonna have is, what we're gonna say in general is that we wanna interpret a C percent confidence interval for some parameter, let's say, you know, P. We're gonna say that we're C percent confident. So from, the, from our example, we would say we're 95% confident that the interval from, so from the problem we did, it was like point, from 0.3, 08 to 0.512 captures a true population proportion of you know people in the US who have contracted COVID. So this is a good this is a good sentence frame to um, get you on the right track when you first start learning this stuff. Let's go ahead, let's do a practice problem. So in this example, this company is concerned many of its employees are in physical condition, you know, which can hurt their productivity. To determine how many steps each employee takes per day on average, the company provides the pedometer to 50 randomly selected employees for one 24 hour period. They record how many steps they took during that 24 hour period. After they collect the data, this company statistician reports a 95% confidence interval from 40,547 steps to 8,477 steps. Okay, so part A, let's interpret this confidence interval. So we're gonna use this sentence frame above so we're gonna say that we're 95% confident 
that the interval from 4,547 to 8,473, and, and remember, know what, we're, what our statistic is. If it's mean, if it's proportion, in this case, it's mean. So we're 95% confident that this interval captures the true mean number of steps that employees at this company take per day. You can also say it takes per day on average if you want. And now what was the estimate that was used to create the interval? What's the margin of error? So remember the point estimate is the middle of the interval. So one way to think of this, um, view this as you know being on number line, numbers on number line. So this is our lower bound. This is our upper bound. Our point estimate is in the middle of these. So in this case, it'd be X bar. And our margin of error would be the distance from here to there or the distance from here to there. So to find the middle of these values, you simply add them and divide by two. And so when we do that, we'll get 6,510. That'll be our point estimate. Now, um, what's the margin of error? We can simply just find the difference from the middle here. So 6,510 and either subtract 4,547 from there or 8,473 minus 6510. So simple math. And we'll not 1,963 either way. The margin of error, the distance from here to there or distance from there to there. You can also interpret it as just absolute value. They're both equivalent. Now the big question, part C, recent guidelines su suggest that people should aim for 10,000 steps per day. So based on this data, is there convincing evidence that the employees of this company are not meeting the guideline on average? Explain. So when you are answering questions like this, resort to your common sense of the real world. Um, a lot of this stuff you can just figure out logically. So um, our interval we got to be 1,547 to 8,473. Now, um, this, this interval does not capture 10,000. It doesn't even seem to be close. Um, now, it, if it doesn't even capture 10,000, it doesn't mean that 10,000 um, isn't the true mean number of steps. It's possible that it could be, but we would, we would you know, be convinced that it's not because this is a 95% confidence interval. So it's a pretty strong, strong interval. We have we can, we can be pretty confident that um, that 10,000 is not the true mean number. So um, we would say that they're not meeting this guideline on average. All these values are below. Now, and so speaking on speaking on that. Um, if like we, let's say we had an interval one from 15,000 to 20,000, even though the interval from 15,000 to 20,000 doesn't capture 10,000, doesn't mean we would say they're not meeting the guidelines. Um, and, 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 on, and on the contrary, they're exceeding the guidelines. So, you know, again, use their common sense that if they're, you know, they're averaging more than 10,000 steps, we could say they're meeting it. So again, be careful, just make sure when you're doing statistics that you, Use your common sense, try to be careful about taking things too literally, I guess in that sense, because um, that can, you know, that can, you know, confuse you more than it 